Thank you to Camilla. I am joining Catherine here in the commentary box and we're at the start line for the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. Um, so special. They've made it through to this Sunday, the finals day at Henley. I can't tell you enough how big this day is in the rowing world. It's a huge moment. And we're looking there at the Clare's Court crew on the Berkshire station. Just sitting relax, Catherine. We've got a few more minutes till about to go and as we stare down the course, at the Redwood Scholars there, very calm seats. I think we're very calm, we're very relaxed here in the commentary box. I, sitting in that start line, although it looks calm, there'll be hearts will be pounding and there'll be, you know, they, it, even to qualify for this event is so competitive. So to make it to this final day, it's a big, big thing for both of these crews. So they will want, they've got 2,112 metres waiting for them ahead and then the, the champions declared. So this is, this is down to them now. They move to the front stops. Start stroke from powerful position. The square blades as we join the start of the Diamond Jubilee Junior Women's Quads. Claire's Court School on the Berkshire Station at the top of your screen. Redwood Scholars USA on the Buckingham Station on the bottom of your screen. And off they go. Always punchy, always fast in these quads, Catherine. I know, I love watching quad starts. You know, these are boats that are almost the same speed as the, the eights, but you know, they're half the sort of size and length and obviously half the numbers of athletes. So you get up to speed really quickly and it's, it's eight blades flashing through the water at speed. Beautiful start from both crews right here. Also steering, always an issue, Cox's boats. You've got to have one of those athletes will have a, a, a sort of steering wire attached to their foot. They've got one bit of their brain attached to the steering and the rest of it powering down this course. Great start from both boats, they're looking level. This is it. This is what the entire season has really built towards. This moment right now, and the crews are neck and neck coming off the end of the island. Staying in your boat, stay calm. You're not looking across right now, are you? Uh, there's always someone having a little sneaky look, isn't there? One, we used to maybe do that. But no, I mean, in theory, you're, it's still so early in the race. You want to just get that rhythm right. You know, that we've got there in the strokes. You just want to settle the rhythm down. It's still coming out of that fast, high rate level. But you're going to come into that rhythm that will take you down the length of the course now. This is a close-up of Clare's Court, their local Maidenhead club from just further up the river. Um, done an incredible job to get to this point here and um, really nice start from them as well. Nice rhythm. Nice. Really good start there. Great shot of them. Great from the side. Both crews very horizontal. You know, the rowing stroke's a horizontal thing. You put a blade in, you push flat. You don't always want to see your shoulders lifting or anything lifting up. And Oh, lovely shot there of Clare's Court. Led really well there by Rebecca Don in the stroke seat. Keep your eyes in, guys. Just a few words there from Noala McFarlane behind her. We've also seen Hannah Hickson behind in the two seat giving out some calls. Jemima Don in the bio seat just keeping it sensible, keeping it level. Here we've got close up of Redwood Scholars. They've come over from USA and they've done an incredible job this week as well. Redwood Scholars, the crew to beat. They have come across all the way from the west coast if you're joining us hello based there in the san francisco bay and they're an open club a community club anyone can come and join and they have absolutely dominated the rowing scene in america this season and they've come across here to really add a cherry on the top of that i think Catherine. yeah it's wonderful to see them here we, we say that you know this, this is sort of a you know local club in clears court with a, an international to a visitor coming in from Redwood Scholars, and it just makes for fantastic racing. Both boats, incredibly well drilled, really beautiful sculling from both young women crews. And um, I mean, they're actually coming together a bit closer than they should be with steering. But again, you know, it's a long race this one, and they just need to settle in. Look, as we were talking about, a little glance across, just checking where they are. You never want to lose contact with any crew at this point. Just keeping an eye on where the opposition is. This hurts. They are, you know, a minute into this race. They look so calm and so relaxed, but their lungs are absolutely burning. They've got to stick with this race. It's a long way. It's not terrible tailwind today. It's almost a bit crosswind coming across from the Buckingham Station. So, you know, you've got a race on your hands. If you can stick with that crew in front of you, and they really have, Catherine. 
Yeah, that's a really good move actually, because I think we thought Redwood Scholars was moving out and them again. Very, very classy crew coming over for the USA here. But Clear's court has matched it and they're seeing that. Now this is, I love this angle from quads as well. You can just see the timing, you can see how low the shoulders are, you can see the arm movement coming together. And again, just looking at that blade work, the handles should be matched. They come apart slightly, but you know the the really top quads you'll just see hardly difference between athlete to athlete down that boat. Your top tips for running in a quad, Catherine, you've done a few of them in your time? Hold on tight. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it, I do think it's a fabulous boat. It's fast and it's feisty. Um, but, you know, I did spend the first few years probably doing it a little bit nervous. Of a lot, it feels like a lot could go wrong, but these, these young women are showing us how it's done. Leela Hearn, Georgia Hutchinson, Mina Barr, Caroline Phipps there. We see a great shot of them. And then now from above, their crews are overlapping. They're still both in this race. Yeah, this is, I mean, as a spectator, this is exactly what you want to see. To be honest, as an athlete, you'd rather be somewhere kind of far apart from your position. But, you know, this is exactly what finals day is for. These are two boats. We know what this race means to both these crews. Like you said, this is the end point of a very long season. And this is a big title. The Henley Royal Regatta title is one you want to win. I mean, look at this. Nothing between these two crews. This is fabulous sculling. I think Claire's Court made a move. They've made a move and they pulled a seat back. You're looking at crew on the top of your screen. They're both in white, but at the top of your screen is Claire's Court. They are giant killers. They've come here and they've overturned crews, the ship lake, the holders, they've overturned crews that they almost weren't meant to. And they're here on finals day, neck and neck, coming through Remington Club. Yeah, this is the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. Now, clues in the title, it was named around the Diamond Jubilee, which is 10 years ago now. So the event's been here for since 2012. So it's the anniversary of this event. And it is just, I think we've just seen sort of junior sculling just get better and better every time we see this event coming in. So it really is, you do see some brilliant young women in their own right, but they have got, you know, they've got an amazing future ahead of them in this sport as well. Now both crews are looking at each other because they're side by side. This is it guys, who is going to pull it out? Who's going to hold on to this? I think Red would have sneaked out a seat or two from that angle. This is also what winds me up about this boat. It's always so hard to tell. Until you're until you're directly opposite the crews, it's really hard to predict what crew's doing what. So I think what's impressive, it sounds like, looked like Redwood has still got that slight lead, but my goodness, it's still enough of the course that anything could happen. These are young athletes. We're looking at rowers that are 15, 16, 17, 18. And look at the rowing they're bringing. Look at that talent, look at that skill they're bringing to this Henley course today. It is so impressive and it is neck and neck. Oh, look at that. I mean, we, we saw Redwood had a bit more of a lead, but the, the latest update, it looks like there's just about a bye ball in it. I mean, this is this is stroke for stroke. This is when you're an athlete. You are you need to be so focused in your boat. And yet, when there's only two boats in a race, you can't help but be drawn into what's happening right next to you. There's, you know, normally, we're used to six lane racing. There's other boats to distract you or to focus on. Here, it's just you and your opposition. And it's and I think that could be Clear's Court moving out a little bit from this angle. What a move. This is so impressive. It's very hard when you're one and one to be losing and come through another crew. And that is a the grit and determination and maybe a bit of confidence building through the regatta for this Clare's Court School. A little look across there from Rebecca Don's stroke of the Clare's Court School. Have we got it? Are we doing it? That looks like a decisive move from here. There's still enough of the course for things to change again, but that's the first time we've really seen Clare's Court come through and take the lead. Strong. Now remember, they are a local club. They are going to feel the roar of these supporters right next to them. And for both crews, it's very, very rare to be so close to a crowd. I mean, look, you can see the numbers on the banks this morning, this afternoon now. It is fabulous to be in part of this environment. This has been a killer blow. Claire's got to come through the Redwood Scholars and they've pulled out to two thirds of a length. A little look across. Are we nearly there? Progress board. You've got 100 meters to go. Redwood's going to go again. Do they have any space they can make up now? It looks like Clear's Court might have this sewn up right to the line, this one. Into the last few strokes, and Clare's Court, you hold your heads up high because you have just won the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup 2022. What a race. Arms go up. Elation. There's a usual cheer to your opposition. It's always a three cheers, respectful call, but as we can see from most people, they're about to hit us in this box here. Congratulations, what does it feel like being a winner here at the regatta? Oh, so good. Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. How long, has it, how long has this been the aim for you guys? Uh, since about last year, when we came here, finally the first time. Since then, we wanted to come back and win it, and we did. So, yeah. And what went so well today? We just stuck to our plan, trusted the process, and just went for it when we had the opportunity. 
<laughs> and finally, what was the atmosphere like coming down the, the, the river that, through the enclosures? I mean, it was terrifying, but <laughs> I think once we started to go, we didn't stop, and then I just thought, we need to keep doing this, and then we'll be okay. Congratulations. Well done, guys. Thanks Thank so you so much. much.